Welcome to another episode of the Money and Business Hero podcast. My name is Florian Fritz, and we're talking about the three pillars of financial success, money mindset, money management, and money making. My guest today is a best-selling author, a professional processor, and one-of-a-kind teacher. His unique messages and unconventional style have supported entrepreneurs, coaches, leaders, and spiritual seekers worldwide. His focus is to help them live a life of purpose and meaning, create financial freedom, and make huge differences in creating a better world. Welcome to the show, Aaron Timms. Great to have you here. Thank you so much. Great to be here. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Aaron, you have a pretty interesting story on uh, how you got where you are now. Could you tell us a bit about that to start with? Yeah, sure thing. Um, I'll tell you the the short version. Um, In 2008, I was in a very serious car crash. It was my best friend's 24th birthday. And coming back from a restaurant, we I was actually in the back. And he was telling and what's really interesting about this actually is important to know that the previous six weeks I've been in the front because I actually already had a broken leg from a football injury. So I, I was waiting to get in the car. He was taking ages coming out of the restaurant. And I had this kind of like, I don't know if you'd call it a cooling or a, or a knowingness. It wasn't a voice, but it was like this knowingness that kind of said to me, get in the car and just get in. So I kind of, I climbed in the back and, and off we went. And, and that's when the crash happened. And we lost control about 70, 80 miles an hour, probably 90, 100 kilometers an hour. And all of a sudden we're spinning left, right, all from the back. All I can see is like the trees, the road, the trees, the road. And then boom, we hit the curb, flipped upside down and landed on the roof. And I'd never been amongst death before, but behind, I, I mean, I was screaming, I was in agony, but behind that there was this cold, dead, still energy in the air. And I could just feel it. And, and I was howling. It felt like someone had a big kitchen knife and was driving it into the base of my spine. I was in agony. Um, and then and then I saw blue, you know, faces appear and blue lights flashing and the sound of metal tearing. And, and I realized I was being cut out of the car. Then I was taken to Colchester A&E. Where, and that's when I learned that my best friend of eight years was killed and my girlfriend of six years was killed. And that I'd broken my back and, and I was paralyzed. Truthfully, I didn't even know what that meant. Um, I just knew that my back was in agony. My legs didn't work. And and truth is, I didn't even care. I felt like I just had my heart ripped out from the center of my chest. So, um, you know, that was that that changed the course of my life forever, as you can imagine. Um, <laughs> then I was airlifted by a helicopter to a specialist unit in London where I spent three weeks in intensive care. And that's when I had the operation to realign my spine. And when I came out, the doctor said, to my dad the good news is we've realigned his spine no further damage the bad news is that the the damage the spinal cord was worse than we originally thought Aaron's going to be in a wheelchair for life and that was where my quest to understand the potential and the power within us started because at 21 years old I mean anyone listening to this uh, especially if you're a parent you can probably imagine bearing the weight of that 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 news but being 21 years old, I was I was petrified. I was scared, like facing the rest of my life in a wheelchair. And it just, to me, it wasn't an option. I was so scared of, of that reality that I went on this deep dive and this quest to try and heal myself. And what I didn't realize at the time, that it was going to send me on a deep spiritual journey uh, to answer some big questions about life. You know, why are we here? What are our purpose? And and that's where, that's the catalyst for the change. And that's where it all started. Wow. Well, amazing story. <laughs> And obviously, you're not in a wheelchair now. Nope, I'm not. <laughs> no. Okay, so you found that. you uh, Now you're doing the Super Conscious Coaching Academy. Yes. What's, uh, what's Super Conscious exactly? Great question. And I love it when people ask me this because I went on a quest to heal people. Um, I, I, I was sent to Stoke Mandeville um, and... I focused on, I started reading books about how the mind can heal the body and and, and what we're really capable of. And I focused on visualizing and meditating and all of these things that were totally alien to me. I thought were a bit woo-woo at the time, to be honest, but I was desperate. 12 weeks later, I walked out of hospital. And then it was in, and that was in 2000, at the beginning of 2009. Uh, The crash was on the 22nd of September, 2008. 
and then uh, then my life kind of took a turn for the worst. I hit depression and 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 I had I struggled for years. And then I went to an event in 2018. That was MMI. I know you know it well. <laughs> and yeah, you know MMI is for, stands for a millionaire mind intensive for every listener who didn't know that's a program by T. Harv Eker. Yes, millionaire mind intensive. And that that changed the course of my life forever because one of my big realizations was, you know, that 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 crash happened for a reason. And the fact that I wasn't helping people meant it was my own fears that were holding me back. And I realized how selfish that was. So I made this like declaration in the room and actually to myself, to my soul, it was like a promise to the universe. I'm going to help people. So I started helping people to heal. And I found that some people healed and some people didn't. What uh, uh, And it drove me mad because it was like, I know that, that it's possible. So why are some people healing and some people not? And when I looked at the, the common denominators of all the, and we're talking like miraculous health um, transformations, healing from MS and cancer and degenerative back disorder and, you know, some real miracle stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and it drove me mad. Like, why are some people not healing and some aren't? And, and the common denominator that I found was basically one thing. There's two layers, but one thing. And it was people that were healing were, were happy or, beca- or they became happy. And what does that mean? Well, happiness, there's there's two kind of layers to it in its simplest form. Obviously, it's a bit more complex than this. But in its simplest form, there's two layers. People that are happy are getting what they want in the physical world. They're becoming financially free or they're finding love or, you know, whatever it is you want as a human being, you get it. The second layer is a spiritual layer. It's about growth. It's about contribution. It's about fulfillment. Happiness in the physical form and fulfillment. When And the, all the people that were healed were achieving those two, three things through my coaching. So then I realized, okay, the big question then, if I really want to help people to heal is how do I help people get what they want? And that's when I discovered the superconscious. And the superconscious is a part of us that it's it's like the bridge between this, this universal energy. I mean, for the scientific minds listening, Einstein called it the, the, the field of relativity. Um, you could call it the ether, you could call it the universe, you can call it what you want, but there, there's a field of energy that the science has proven. And the superconscious is like the bridge between our own human mind, which is made up of an unconscious, which is a a conditioned set way of being, a subconscious, which is a set of programs, a conscious, which is our ability to think uh, and create new ideas. And then there's the superconscious. And that's that expanded part of our higher selves. And it's like the bridge between our human mind and the universal mind. And it's at that point what we teach people to do is break free from these unconscious agendas that were created, created through their experience of life, we call you could call it um, a conditioned self, if you like, mm-hmm. and then tap into your super conscious self, like a true self. And you know, just we're talking about money today, right? And what I find with most people, they they do courses, they do programs, they learn about business. Some of these people are super intelligent as well, right? and they learn about marketing and sales, and you know, all of the like the ingredients and the tools that we need to to, to make money and become wealthy, even whether you're employed or whether you've got your own business, these skills are still important. And but the one thing they miss is what they can't see is the blind spots of their own unconscious, the blind spots of their own mind. And that's what we teach people to do, basically, is break free from any unconscious agendas, unconscious limitations, identities, which are conditioned selves and operate from a super conscious state, which is a higher state of awareness. And it's in that state that you can actually create anything. So that's that's like the fundamental, the bottom line of what we do. Okay, cool. Can we go a little deeper into that? Uh, So what do you need? What do you need to do? Uh, to get rid of those unconscious agenda agendas that are holding you back from creating the success you want, even though you have other technical knowledge that you need? Mm, that's a great question. <laughs> I'm really glad you asked. <laughs> One of the biggest challenges, people, I mean, people will have heard limiting beliefs, negative emotions, feeling stuck, confused, overwhelmed, a lot of these experiences that we all experience at times. And, you know, it can be a challenge to to release those things. But the the biggest challenge isn't that, because when you identify, let's take a limited belief or or an unconscious agenda. In fact, let me let me share how they're created. This will help. Let's say you're unconscious. It's 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 job. It's designed to look for your survival potential to keep you alive. Right. So what happens is, is, is let's say you're five years old. 
and you do something very embarrassing and you shame the family. So you're told off and you're, you know, you're really scolded in front of everybody at a family dinner. And that causes a really deep sense of shame and embarrassment as a five-year-old. Now, do you die? Do you perish? And the answer is no. It's a very, very unpleasant experience. It will cause maybe some emotional trauma, but you don't die. So what happens is, is then the unconscious says, okay, shame and embarrassment are a survivable experience. So what the unconscious then does is it's, it has an agenda to look for survivable experiences in life because its job is to keep you alive, your body alive. It's not designed to create you financial freedom and success and the things that you want. So all of a sudden, you've got an unconscious agenda that says we need to create situations of shame and embarrassment in our lives because we know we can survive it. And that's what we call an unconscious agenda. Now, your question, how do you break free from that? What do you need to do to change that? Well, the hardest thing about this is it, it's not breaking free from it. It's identifying the blind spot. And, and what I mean by the blind spot, what is the agenda? What is the unconscious agenda that you have? Because when you identify that, well, they, we, we have simple processes. And actually one of them um, in its simplest form is get it clearly identified and then run some questions. And one of the biggest and the most profound but simplest questions is, is what are the consequences? You know, if your unconscious agenda is, you know, I'm not good enough, what are the consequences of I'm not good enough? Are there any other consequences? And what you do is, as you start to identify the consequences in all areas of life, you begin to unravel it. You bring it into the conscious mind. And as you begin to unravel it, what does it do? It creates a level of awareness. So you can all of a sudden start to see. So let's say you have an unconscious agenda of, you know, being rich means you're evil because rich people are evil, right? <laughs> of course they are. <laughs> you know, because it's definitely not the people that have the money that are evil or good. It's definitely the money. Um, and then actually that's something that, that I really find fascinating is people just don't understand the definition of money. There's a, I mean, money is a very charged subject, right? We, we're told by our parents, you know, money doesn't grow on trees or, you know, we don't have enough money or we're told, you know, money's the root of all evil. And we're told all of these crazy ideas about money, but then we're put into a system where we're taught to conform because we need to go, go to school, get a good job. Why? To earn money so that you can have this certain type of lifestyle. So we're told in one way, we're told, you know, don't, don't take money seriously. The, you know, money doesn't buy you happiness and all these things. So we're, we're kind of like being conditioned to say it's not important. And then we're being conditioned to say it really is important. So it's very conflicting and confusing. It's a very charged subject. So, you know, if you've got an unconscious agenda, of, let's say, I don't know, money isn't money won't buy you happiness or, you know, rich people are evil. Well, what happens? You're going to create situations to avoid those areas. So when you when you start to unravel the consequences of that, you make the reality that those agendas are creating for you clear. And you, you start to see the patterns, the emotional patterns, the behavioral patterns. And that's really the key because the conscious awareness of the pattern is, is like the it's like the, the doorway to change. It's not the only thing for change, but it's definitely the doorway. Okay, great. So I think we step we we skipped one step here. Uh, because you said, and now I, I know my uh, hidden agenda, and then I ask what's the consequence of that, like as, as one possible process. But how do I uncover that hidden agenda? I think we <laughs> that's a <get> step. <laughs> yeah, that's a really, really good question. And um, I mean, the best answer is actually get a good coach, someone that can help you get to that point, if I'm totally honest. Um, you know, and it's one of the biggest mistakes people make that they, that we buy into the idea that we can do it alone. And it's just not true. We, we really do need a coach or someone that can support us. However, there are ways that we can do it ourselves. And one of the simplest, most easy and probably most effective way is when you look at what you want. Okay. So let's say, for example, you do want financial freedom and, you know, one, in fact, one piece of advice I would always give people, if you want something, define it. Because if you, I mean, people say financial freedom, but what does that even mean? Does that mean enough money to pay your bills? Does it enough money mean enough money to pay your bills and travel? I mean, first of all, define what you want and get clear on that. Really when you define what you want and you get clear on it, look at look at how far away from that you are in your life right now. Because if you've got if you if what you want is here, 
and you're here. So what you want is at point B and you're at point A and there's a distance, right? So somewhere in that distance is the unconscious agenda. So a very simple question you can ask yourself when you get clear on, on those points is, okay, so connected to financial freedom, what do I believe about myself? And it takes, a, uh, it takes honesty, okay? It takes honesty to answer that question and it's really important. Uh, and what, as you start to answer that, what do I believe about myself? And the second question is connected to financial freedom or, or whatever area you're exploring, but in this case, financial freedom. Connected to financial freedom, what do I believe about financial freedom? And write it down. And usually you'll get the first sort of 0.5 of a second or the first second or so will be the, the truth. You might think, well, my money's evil or money doesn't buy you happiness or financial freedom's hard to reach or financial freedom is only for people that, that, that uh, inherit money. There could be all sorts of crazy ideas that come up. Mm -hmm. Usually in the first 0.5 of a second is, is what the, the unconscious speaking. Then after that, you start to kick in and analyze it. So what's really important is take a few deep breaths, ask yourself the question and then capture the first few answers. And that that will give you a very, very it may be a very accurate, if not, it will certainly give you a very clear indicator as to what the unconscious agenda is. Then you can start to to run a few processes on it. Awesome. Thank you. So that's uh, the first steps you can do with yourself. Best way to make it faster and more reliable is get a good coach for it. Definitely. Yeah. Okay, great. Now, then you said, okay, we can run processes. That's another question I had for you. You uh, say, say you're a professional processor. I'm pretty sure not everyone knows what a processor is and does. Can you explain that? <laughs> yeah, sure. So there's a, the best way to explain it is ask yourself the question, have you ever felt like you're in the zone? You're in the right place at the right time. You're just lucky. And you just, you're not really sure why, but you just things just seem to go right. Well, what processing does is it puts you in that place. We call it the zone. We call it the gold zone. Now, how does that work? It's like very advanced coaching, but it includes the spiritual element. And, one, and what we really do is we release any charge and trap life force in an area. So, And what does that mean? Well, it means if the, your attention is either fixated on an area or the opposite, it's avoiding an area, is because there's charge. Charge, by definition, is out of control life force. So it's, it's a lot of um, heightened emotion connected to the area. So what we do is we do very advanced coaching to release that trap life force and release that charge. And that's kind of what processing is. And we have processes to handle pretty much every situation. Um, we, we've got some you know more gentle processes. We've got some really, really deep processes. Um, we can even go as deep as detangling telepathically projected images. I mean, we've got some really deep work. It's, it's really amazing. Um, it works on a basic principle. And I want to share this because anybody listening to this um, should know this. This is the basic paradigm of creation. And this is kind of what like, underpins processing. If you look at your, your, the things that you want in life, you, know, you could say success, right? Success by definition is knowing you're wanted and attaining your wanted. Let's say financial freedom or, or love or connection or, you know, all of these things that we want. We all have our own versions of it, but we all want those things ultimately, right? Well, what, what do they all have in common? They are their results. Mm -hmm. They're a result, a part of our reality. They're a result of the things that we do. So you've got your results. And then if we, if we reverse engineer this, why do we get those results in life? Well, we get them because of the things that we do, the actions we take. So our body is an implementation tool. It's like a vehicle to drive us through life. I mean, and that, that part's super simple. You don't need to be a guru to, to work that out. But then if we go one layer deeper, you then have what is it that determines the actions that we take and the things that we do in life? It's the mind, right? Because it, it, the mind is a planning machine. One of the most the simple definitions that I love, and there are many, is the mind is a planning machine. So what is it? What is it that, that puts the software into the mind for this to be a planning machine? Well, it's either past experience, it's identities, it's our conditioned self, or there's another option. And this is where we start to go a little bit of a layer deeper. The other option is a vision. When we get a clear holographic vision of what we want in life, we, that, that the vision becomes the software for the mind. 
So all of a sudden you have a new planning machine. So you start to create a new reality. Now, if you go one layer deeper than that, you have to ask yourself the question, what determines the vision? Like what creates the vision for you, for anyone listening? And it's, it's our dreams, it's our aspirations, it's our wants, it's our desires. And, and what most people miss is that a lot of these, they are spiritual. Money is a spiritual thing. Money is a, a value exchange. It's, it's nothing more, nothing less. It's a convenient method of exchanging money. So, you know, our dreams and our desires, our wants connected to money or love, relationships, anything, it's, it, it's a spiritual desire. So then the, the, the bigger question then becomes and this is this is where we go one layer even deeper and this is this is the most important thing that i've probably ever learned actually is what is it then that determines the dreams the aspirations the goals which will then determine the vision create the planning for the mind the, the software for the mind to do the actions we do to get the results we want well it's you as a, as a spiritual being it's the it, it's your awareness of who you truly are and that's a super conscious state of being. Now, when you put that in order and you get clear on who you are, you restore your spiritual abilities, which is really just regaining your attention, which is releasing it from any avoided areas or fixated areas. So you expand, your power expands, your ability to communicate expands. You get a clear vision. Your mind starts planning in a different way, take different actions, you different experience in life. Boom, your reality changes. And... One of the things that we do as processes, and, and I had this done to me, is we clean slate. And what that means is we run a process connected to money. So we look at what is the definition of money. We, we run a process on money. What, what, is it, what, what is it for? And any precepts, any beliefs, any agendas connected to that, we clean them up. And guess what? It's no longer avoided area. It's no longer fixated on. It's just is what it is. And, and that's that's how we help people to create financial freedom. Um, I hope that made sense. <laughs> okay, um, two, I got two things out of that. Now, first, you uh, got to dive a couple of layers deep and find out who you truly are spiritually. Yes. Yeah. I guess if I ask you how to do that, you'll tell me, get a coach. That would be my first answer. <laughs> <laughs> What's the second one? <laughs> The second one is, is look at what is it that makes you up? And in its simplest form, there's, there's you as a, as a body. So go and define what the body is. Cause it's a, it's a, it's a machine. It's a, it's a machine of different like oxygenated and carbonated cells. Go and define what the mind is. Go and define the word identity. Because identity is a personality trait, and that's that's what who we often think or believe we are. And then go and define the word you and and spirituality. Because when you define these words and you get clear on what they are, you actually start to get a very clear picture of who you are. Because most people believe they are a body, or they believe they're the mind in the body, or they believe that there are a certain set of personalities. And, and there's a layer of truth to that, obviously, but it's a half truth. And a half truth means that there's, there's a, a piece of the truth missing that makes the, the whole truth. So, you know, just for anyone listening to this, I would strongly recommend go and define those words. And just in, in the very simple act of defining the words, you will get a vast amount of clarity on who you really are. Wow, great. Thank you for that. And then still get a coach, okay? And <laughs> the second one was uh then to to clean slate to uh the, the term money your so to clean your relationship with money that to get rid of all those beliefs uh, and and problems you have around that right absolutely yeah if of course if money is the goal if something else is the goal then clean slate that <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. I mean, I have a co-processor, a friend of mine who's also trained as a professional processor, and we co-process weekly. We clean slate lots of different areas. Um, you know, any any area where we feel stuck in at the moment, we'll just clean slate it. And it's amazing how it cleans it up. Um, yeah, very, very, very quick story, actually, just connected to money and the power of this, if that's OK. Sure. A few uh, four, five weeks ago, I was on an advanced training for processing. And we looked at a, a bulletin that the, the guy, Alan C. Walter, who created the knowledgeism and, and processing, he wrote this bulletin and it really opened up um, a lot of realizations about money and how 
I'd been very good at making money, but poor at managing it. And I and I didn't realize just how poor. And it was a really fascinating um, experience for me. And I actually crashed in the area of money, which I haven't done for years. I, I've actually, I've been good at making it. I've been financially free for quite a long time. I'm very privileged, but actually I didn't realize how badly I was managing it. And it opened up a lot. And, and I started to, I hit a bit of a red zone in, in money. And within that week, I had a transfer of $16,000 disappear. I had a client who had agreed to come on board as a, as a one-to-one client, just totally out of the blue withdrew and said, actually, you know what, I'm not sure I'm ready for this. Um, and then we had another problem in our property company, which cost me quite a lot of money or, or was actually, it's not true. It was, we were quoted a lot of money for what they thought the potential problem was with one of the properties. And all of a sudden I was like, oh, this is not like, I was really scared because I knew I was out of energetic alignment and, and I'd had this crash. So I processed it. I, I got my processor. We spent three hours on it. We really went deep on it. We moved into alignment. I looked into, you know, I really had to look into my own finances, look at my personal, my business, put, you know, put order in place. I didn't do anything physical world. The only actions I actually took were a lot of spreadsheets, look at my finances. I actually sat back and didn't take any action apart from analyzing with fact, not opinion. And I cleaned the area up and all of a sudden the bank reached out to me, hey, we've recovered your $16,000. The client who, who withdrew reached out to me and said, you know what, Aaron, I've been thinking I do really need to do this. Um, actually, let's do it. I want to start straight away. The, the problem that we had with the property was a false alarm. <laughs> um, now, call that coincidence, call it what you will. But I've had these experiences happen to myself enough times to know that because I was energetically out of alignment, I hit I hit a, an area that I'd been avoiding, not and unknowingly is the truth. But I realigned myself and boom. So I just wanted to share that because anyone listening, I think it, they should know the importance of, of moving into alignment in any area, not just money, but any area. Absolutely. Great story. Thank you. Because I think there's lots of people who are good at making money but never keep any of it because they're really bad at, at managing it. And here's one big reason for, for that, that you have some beliefs that you can't can't have money, you're not in alignment, and then yeah. you get rid of the money instead of working with it. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. I think that was some super valuable insights on spirituality and money. Now, about you personally, how important is money for you? Very very important um i take it very seriously and and the more i learn about money and the more i learn about spirituality the more seriously i take it it is a it is a is a fair value exchange and if i want to give a lot of value part of the way that i give that is through money and for me i'm really driven by the idea of a new education system for for the world i have a three-year-old she's going to be four next week um and i'm really driven by the idea of children should have equality and freedom the bottom line is, can I help to create that education system if I'm broke, if I'm poor, if I don't have money to invest into, into creating new schools and new centers? No, I can't, you know, which means my driving force for money is, is very, very strong for those reasons. Awesome. We're getting very close to the answer for question number two already. What's your purpose for money? There you go. My purpose for money is because whether we like it or not, Money is a value exchange and it does buy us levels of freedom. Now, there is emotional freedom, mental freedom, spiritual freedom that it doesn't buy, but it does buy us a physical freedom. It does buy us experiences. It does buy us physical world freedoms, which does actually contribute to emotional, mental and spiritual freedom. And I think it's important not to deny that. Um, I think money does buy us happiness to a degree. It's not the sole purchaser of, of happiness. Don't get me wrong, but actually... Um, my rich friends are genuinely more happy than my broke friends is the truth. And I think that for us to experience freedom and then to be able to pass that baton on and help other people experience freedom, we need money right now. We really do. Great. Thank you. I think that was a good, good, a very good explanation, uh, especially of the topic money and happiness. Uh, standing discussion about that. Now, <laughs> What's uh, since 
P rich, you said it beautifully. Rich, uh, your rich friends are more happy than your broke friends, in general. So, what's your best uh, wealth building tip for people? How do they get get rich? My best tip for people is: it, I mean, if you want to get rich, it's very, very simple. You have to earn more than what you spend. Mm. It's really that simple. It's like if you want to lose weight, you have to burn more calories than you consume. It's not a magic formula. It's a very, very simple equation. And, you know, uh, and that equation is true for anyone. Now, if you there, there are games in money. I mean, if you're broke and you and you're trying to get financially free and let's say in this context, it means um, you could pay all your bills and your mortgage, et cetera, without having to work. Let's just for, for argument's sake, say that's financial freedom. Well, if 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 you earn more than what you spend, then you are working towards having a pot there to invest. And then, of course, the next tip is manage it well. Because if you're earning more than what you're spending and then you don't manage it well, well, if you're putting it in the wrong investments or you're you know, doing whatever, well, guess what? That, that pot is going to dissipate. And it's really that simple, actually. And just connected to that, something I really, really, really want to say because it's so important, when people come to me and they say, hey, Aaron, you know, I, I want to be financially free or I want to heal my body. First thing I say is stop focusing on healing your body. If you want to heal your body, stop focusing on healing your body. Create optimum health. It's very, it looks the same, but it's very different. If you want to be financially free, stop focusing on fixing your money problems. Focus on creating wealth, which is, of course, earning more money. <laughs> so in its simplest form, earn more than you spend and manage it well. Awesome. Thank you. That's that's almost what I always say. Spend less than you earn and invest the difference. <laughs> so very close. Thank you so much, Aaron, for coming. If anyone would like to know more about you or get some processing or other help, we said a couple of times a good coach would be helpful. How can they find you? My, my website, which is www.aarontimsofficial.com. Uh, or they're just welcome to reach out to me on Facebook. Okay, awesome. I'll definitely share the link to your website with this episode. Thank you for coming. Anything we forgot? Anything you want to add before we close? No, I think it's brilliant. And thank you for having me on the show. And, you know, if I could leave uh, leave the audience with one message, it's this. It's that you are way more capable than you've ever been led to believe. Beautiful. That's the perfect close. So thanks again for coming. Thank you for listening. And see or hear you soon on the next episode. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Money and Business Hero podcast. I hope you enjoyed this episode and you got some value from it. Please take a moment to leave a rating or even better, a review. That helps awesome people like you to find the show and me to produce more and even better episodes. And don't forget to subscribe. If you want to get regular free tips, tools, techniques on how to build wealth and financial freedom, or simply how to improve your financial life in all three pillars of financial success, join my free Money Hero Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash Money Hero, find the link in the description, or find out more on the website moneyheroacademy.com. See you there.